guys, so in the previous module, we looked at how using the Monte Carlo method, you can estimate definite integrals, right? So using the uniform sampling approach. So it turns out that you can do something more sophisticated by some small simple modification and uh, are, uh, potentially get better convergence. And so this is the idea of importance sampling, right? So we will look at, you know, just the prescription, you can say, and not really the theory of it. And then, and we will try to apply it to an example, which we have already seen. All right, so I will start by clearing all this stuff, clear global. Um, and then, so what is the idea of this Monte Carlo integration, right? So we have seen this last time, we have implemented it. So let's, let's uh, try to rationalize this. So I have this integral from 0 to 1, let's say, of some function f of x dx. So one strategy is to simply take, you know, n samp points randomly between 0 and 1 from drawn from a uniform distribution and then evaluate f of xi, right? So you can look up some textbook on uh, probability or, you know, st statist uh, statistical methods, um, stochastic processes and so on where, you know, proofs of this would be described, given out. So, but the, the point is that this sum is going to converge to the exact integral as n sum becomes larger and larger. And we have seen that in practice, this n sum actually does not need to be very, very large. It can be even for relatively small values of n sum, you can, uh, your, your, the value of this sum will actually go to this integral, right? So now, is it possible to do better, right, using some small tweaking of this method? And it turns out that one way is to do the following, right? So let's rewrite this integral. So integral f of x dx is the same as integral of f of x by p of x times p of x dx. You can, you have this freedom to multiply and divide by the same function, right? So where p, we will choose this p of x to be some suitable probability distribution. So the idea is that instead of, give, you know, picking some n sam num, random variables from this, from a uniform distribution, can we pick, a, pick these numbers from some some other probability distribution and then maybe the convergence will be faster, right? And so, and first of all, is it, uh, is it even reasonable to do this? And it turns out that the answer is yes. So you basically think of this as doing an integration of this new function f of x by p of x, but it's not really over dx, but it's actually p of x dx. So instead of just getting a random variable x, which is uniformly distributed, you have to generate a random number from this new distribution p of x. So once again, I'm going to just state for you the prescription. If you want to go into the details of why this works, how this works and, you know, all the, you know, uh, rigorous proofs underlying this, you know, you'll have to consult some, some sophisticated uh, source for this. There are textbooks available for this, somewhat mathematical in nature, but definitely not out of reach. So. The, the correct order in my view to, to understand these is to first play, play with this, you know, you try out your own functions and then use the prescription that is given here, convince yourself that it, it seems to be working out in practice and only then go back and uh, dig for why it works, right? So that I think is a, is a nice order to, to understand these uh, concepts. So now I'm telling you that you choose your xi not from a uniform distribution, but from this distribution p of x. So, so this you can always do no matter what this p of x is and one p of x is in fact the uniform distribution where you just take it to be to be 1, right, 1 over n if you wish, right. And so can you draw some ad advantage out of this, right. And uh, it is possible if, you know, so if this idea of importance sampling is, is brought in. So basically if you have a uniform distribution, what you're doing is to evaluate a sum, there, you know, there are certain parts of your overall uh, integration or integration is really a sum. So if you're just doing a uniform sampling, you're spending a lot of time visiting areas which actually don't really contribute anything significant to the overall sum and you're wasting so many moves there. So instead, you want your system to appropriately concentrate on only the, the weightier parts, right? So that's the idea of importance sampling. You should uh, simply be giving more weightage to the parts which will in the end 
account for more but uh, you should not you should not do it in such a way that you skew up the distribution and then you get a wrong answer that should not happen and that's why you must draw your random variables now from an appropriate distribution and it turns out that if you choose your p carefully and it turns out that a, a good choice of p is when p tends to mimic the function itself not exactly but if you can come up with a with a p which is somewhat like the function the argument again is simply that you know wherever f of x is larger p of x also if it is larger it are tending to give it more weight and so on right so there is a lot of theory i mean i'm not claiming that this is uh, i am giving you a prescription for optimal p this is again an uh, an art form and you can pick and choose whatever p and so the whole goal of this uh, module this video that i'm doing is for you to try this out you know try out various kinds of p for a, a simple integral and see which one works out better so what i am going to do is give you one example of one particular value of p and i will leave it to you to do more analysis you can also look at how the error will scale with this and how how much labor is involved in various different kinds of p's and how it works with respect to the uniform itself whether it's even worth doing sometimes doing this actually makes it even uh, you know gives you slower convergence more labor and it's not worth doing this kind of complicated sampling but the point is that there is such a method available and sometimes it can be exploited in a in a nice way so let's look at an example so i'm going to go back to the same uh, integral which uh, helped evaluate pi for me so what i will do is so this 4 by 1 plus x squared is a function which keeps falling with distance right and in the entire interval from 0 to 1 so i will use some exponentially dropping distribution i could have used some other power law distribution maybe i will allow that as an exercise as a homework for you to play with a power law dropping distribution so it's convenient to choose this p of x to be uh, you know a normalized distribution so there might be ways of doing this without normalizing it but i think it just you'll have to play then you have to um uh be careful about you know the, uh, the the correct sum that you have to evaluate and so on so the safest is to take a p of x which is normalized which simply means that integral of p of x dx in that particular interval should just go to 1 so i will take a an exponentially dropping function so you can also play with not just this particular exponentially dropping function you can play with a variety of you know a times e to the minus alpha times x and see if there is some nice alpha which is better than other alphas and so on so a lot of fun games to play so i have chosen p of x to be a times e to the minus x and then if i integrate this to normalize it you can it's a very simple integral but i will still use mathematica and then so i will choose my distribution to be e to the 1 minus x divided by e minus x so you can again verify that this function is already normalized so in fact i can let me let me do this with mathematica so i have 1 minus x uh, divided by exponential of 1 it is indeed 1 right it's exactly 1 okay so now we have to figure out a way to generate uh, so this is a, a crucial uh, new step that we have to take right so i have I have said that i want to generate a bunch of random numbers drawn from this distribution i have told you what the distribution is and now how do i get my program to calculate this right you can write your own small block there is a way to do this and it's not so complicated you can do it but mathematica can help us here so there is a ready made function for us so first what i will do is i will define this function called p exponential of 1 minus x divided by e minus 1 and then yeah so there is this function called probability distribution in mathematica so you have to just feed in your function and go from x from 0 to 1 and then it becomes it has the status of a probability distribution so you you can use this dist what i have called dist is a variable and you can draw um you know random variables drawn from this distribution just like we were doing from the uniform distribution using random real now i can draw random variables from this dist 
and the way to do that is to use a function called random variate. We will do that in a moment. But let us quickly check that Mathematica has understood what I am doing. So you can do that by looking at PDF. So let me do this PDF. Yeah, so if you say PDF of a distribution, it is going to tell you oh, this is what the distribution is and then I can also plot this function, plot of this between you know x going from 0 to 1, this is what this function looks like. So you see that it does not drop to 0, it is at some finite value. You can check that it is non-zero only in this region by choosing some slightly you know region which is some slightly extended. So let us say I will go from minus 1 to 2 and then you see that it is non-zero only in this region and you can just quickly verify that indeed the area under this curve is 1, so it is normalized. So this is a legitimate probability distribution function. So I will hide this. So now I, I will define f of x is 4 by 1 plus x squared. So now I am telling you that this dist now has the status of a full distribution because I have used this probability distribution function. So I can histogram this, I can generate 100 instances of this using random variate. If I do random variate of, I can do it once if you want, I will show you that, random variate of dist, if I do it once, it will give me one instance of this. And then if I do it 100 times, that is what this does. Um, so let me actually do it here, 100, comma 100. Let me do 10. So you see there are 10 different numbers it is giving you and uh, you see that the numbers closer to 0 are going to be more likely. So if I do it again, let us say, um, well I mean you, you have to really have a lot more samples and the best, best way to check that it is giving you something reasonable is to do a histogram, that is what I have done here. So if I do a histogram of this. So you see that indeed it is falling off. So the probability that it is a value close to 0 is indeed higher. So this is an exponentially dropping distribution, right. So I can do even larger and then you see that it is an exponent. So it is a reasonable looking histogram. So now what I want to do is finally my Monte Carlo method comes in. So I will create a table of xi equal to random variate of distribution. First obtain a number xi or x, uh, xi and all I have to do is compute f of xi divided by p of xi, right and create a table of this. So let me actually not hide this, okay. So f is not, uh, not yet being defined. So let me define this f, there you go. Now it, it will give me these numbers. So it will evaluate this, it takes a while you see. So it is actually more labor involved in doing all this. First of all, I have to do uh, this dist, then, then the random variate and then it has to evaluate this. So then I have, you know, nicely made a table of table of all this stuff with mean and everything. But this time I am actually going to generate only one of these. You know, you remember where I was doing this Monte Carlo simulation 100 times or even 1000 times when I had uniform distribution. But if, you, if I want to do this here, I check that it is going to take a very long time for it to evaluate this. But I will allow you to play this game. So I have where I have put 1 here, in place of 1 you can put a larger number, I do not know, 10, 100 or whatever and see how that will improve the quality of the data. So I just put it to be 1 and then I am going to, if I run hit shift and enter, you can stare at the code here and convince yourself that it is reasonable. So notice here that I am asking my uh, uh, data of n and mean of this ratio now f of f by p xi first of all I have to generate xi using this random variate of this and then I have to simply compute uh, you know store all these numbers f by p f of xi divided by p of xi and then I have to take a mean of all this right. So this is what is going on in multiple ways. Okay here I go I hit this it is still evaluating, it will take a while for it to evaluate this. So you see that 5 to 10 is somewhat expensive, 
but once it is done, yes, there you go. So, you see that the data is actually pretty good. I would claim that the convergence is, is uh, more rapid, I think, but this is something that you have to play, you have to play more because I, I have only evaluated just one. With just one already, I am able to get 3.12, 3.15 and so on, right. I, I have not done a careful error analysis of this. What I would like you to do error analysis, on the one hand there is the error analysis, but there is also a timing analysis one often has to do. If you have a more sophisticated program going like all this random variate and dist and all this and ratios of these functions, all of this will consume resources and then it will slow down the, uh, the processes involved. Therefore, it is going to cost more in terms of time and more in terms of computational resources. Although I believe if you choose the right, right P, right, do the important sampling in the right way. So, there is a whole sophisticated theory around this and this is called, you know, goes by the fancy term of minimization of variance or, you know, these kinds of things. So, the idea is simply that, you know, the variance uh, contains uh, the error bars and so there is a way to minimize uh, these error bars and speed up the convergence and that comes because you are basically sampling those parts of your uh, you know, the region of interest between 0 and 1 where there is greater weight is given more importance. So, what I want you to do is not worry too much about the theory of this, but rather use this platform. I have set up a nice platform with which you can play more games. So, use the same integral for example, or you can even try the other one log 2 and then play. First of all, you should try instead of a times e to the minus x, try a times e to the minus alpha x for various values of alpha and see if this will improve convergence, whether timing is, is enhanced, if you get better timing. If this does not work, then you can play with other kinds of uh, distributions, maybe a times e to the minus alpha x squared is a possibility or a power law falling. You, know, you can play lots of games and then see if you can make some uh, systematic study and make a pattern, say uh, spot a pattern out of this and then draw your conclusions from there. Okay, so that is it for uh, this module and uh, we will see how, so in fact, there is a, there, there is a more sort of uh, direct way of estimating pi using the Monte Carlo method, not involving any integration of this kind and so that is something that we will discuss, right. So that is uh, related to something called the, uh, the Buffon's needle drop experiment that is going to uh, appear in another module. Thank you.